Good morning, Living Word Christian Center. What a blessing to be here today. Where are the people of the Lord? Make some noise in the house. Hallelujah. What a beautiful day it is. And I'm so excited about what God is doing for us, Living Word Christian Center, what is happening in the body of Christ. I am Norma Lubin and I am your host for today. And I tell you, I am so blessed to see all of your beautiful faces in this place today. I just want to remind you that on Wednesday nights at 7 p.m. we have our Bible study. Also on Saturday mornings we have our prayer call at 8 a.m. And we are excited to celebrate our mothers on next Sunday. Where are my mothers at? We are excited to celebrate you on next Sunday. I tell you what, we have an amazing time lined up for us today. I'm going to ask you to put your hands together for our bishop, for our angel of this house, Bishop Joseph Banks. Come on, you can do better than that for the man of God. We are so excited to celebrate our bishop, and we are just as excited to celebrate our beautiful prophetess, Dr. Kathy Banks. Well, y'all, you know we are moving up in the world, and Living Word Christian Center is making some changes. How about we have recently added Instagram and Twitter to our livingwordcc.org website. Yes, we are excited about that. Well, we are going to get ready to get into the service today. We ask that you will participate with us for our praise and worship. After we have our praise and worship by our amazing, I would say the most amazing praise team on this side of heaven, our Living Word Christian Center praise team, which will be followed by the announcements. You'll then have an opportunity to give, and I just want to go over those giving opportunities real quick. You can always visit us here at 1639 Rhine Street, across the street in the Dream Center is where we are located. You can also mail your tithes and offering there. And you can even go to our website and hit the donate button. That's livingwordcc.org. Additionally, you can text to give. That text number is 844-723-2165. If you have children, they will have an amazing time at our children's church that is led by the one and only brother Jerry, and he is doing an amazing job. The children are learning so much in the children's church. And while they are learning, we too are being fed the anointed word of God, the uncut word of God by our bishop and our prophetess. Again, we are Living Word Christian Center, where we are living by the Word of God. God bless each and every one of you. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Come on, give the Lord a hand clap of praise because he's worthy to be praised. From the rising of the sun to the going down of the same, our God is worthy to be praised. Hallelujah. Come on, if you can't stand on your feet, we're going to praise the Lord this morning because he is good. Amen. Those of you that are watching by Facebook or YouTube or online, we just want you to stand up where you are and praise God right there in your home in your car not too much in your car though we want to make sure you stay driving straight but we want you to praise the lord at work because god is truly worthy to be praised on this great sunday morning if you agree with me shout hallelujah where you are because he's worthy to be praised we serve the risen savior he's great and mighty mighty in all his ways and we want to just praise him today and give him the glory and we're asking that you're going to sing to the top of your lungs if you don't know it just hum it if you can't hum it just clap it but do something to let god know how much you love him today in jesus name hallelujah
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's worship right now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Holy Spirit, have your way. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's worship. Hallelujah. Sweetest of love, where my heart be. 
that you flood this place we ask that you release your power in this place today we pray for your glory Father let it fall on every person in this house today Heavenly Father we don't want to do anything without your presence because we know that in your presence there is the fullness of joy in your presence there is peace in your presence there is joy unspeakable and full of glory so today father we ask that you release your peace and your joy in this place that our hearts are filled with your presence father we summons the anointing right now we press in right now father we ask that you will release release your glory in this place father release your healing anointing in this house those that are watching online father god begin to heal them right now let your glory go beyond the atmospheres let your glory go beyond the frequencies of cameras right now let your power fall in every hospital let your power fall in every prison wherever there is a hurting person we declare that your power will bring healing to them right now in the mighty matchless name of jesus can somebody lift up their voice and give god some praise Come on, let's give him praise. Come on, give him praise and give him glory. The presence of the Lord is in this place. I say the presence of the Lord is in this place. Come on, can you agree with me that the presence of the Lord is in this place? Somebody shout the power of the Lord is in this place somebody shout the favor of the lord is in this place the prosperity of the lord is in this place and the joy of the lord is in this place come on if you got joy unspeakable give him praise and give him glory hallelujah glory to god Well, before you grab your seat, I want you to look at someone and just say this. Say, God is stirring up the gifts that's within you in Jesus' name. Give him praise if you need God to stir up some gifts. Come on, God is stirring up gifts right now. He's stirring up the gift that's within you. There's greatness on the inside of you. There is something powerful on the inside of you. And God is waking it up. In Jesus' name. And you will finish your course. And you will run your race. And you will be victorious. Yes. In the mighty name of Jesus. Well, before you grab your seat, wave at somebody and just say, you look good this morning. Come on, tell him, say, you look real nice this morning. 
Hallelujah. You may have your seats. Yes, Lord. In the presence of the Lord, Holy Spirit, you yes. are welcome. Jesus. You know, we don't even want to do church without him. Thank you, thank you. I say, I will say that again. Somebody got that. We don't even want to have a service without God. We need you in this place, oh God. We need your healing. We need your deliverance. We need your power. We need your covering. We need your lordship. We need you to rule and reign over every situation that anybody is facing right now. Show up. Somebody shout. the kind of God I serve. He'll show up right on time. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory, glory, glory. Well, we want to welcome everyone in the house today. We thank God for each and every one of you that are in the house. We are so excited to have you once again tuning in with us on our Sunday morning service. Amen. And those of you that are watching online, we thank God for you tuning in with us. All our Facebook online uh, live viewers and all our YouTube viewers, we welcome you into the sanctuary. Those of you that are watching even on our website, we thank you for tuning in with us today. We believe today you're going to be blessed. There's such a sweet aroma in the house today such a sweet spirit in this place and we believe that that same spirit is going to be coming to you right where you are whether you're driving whether you're in your home whether you're in the hospital whether you're in prison wherever you're tuning in work this anointing is going to meet you wherever you are and we declare that burdens are going to be removed today yokes are going to be destroyed today and God is going to rule and reign over every situation that you're dealing with today. Amen. So listen, those of you that are watching online, we want you to go ahead and type in all your prayer requests. We've already had some prayer requests. Also type in your praise report in the comment section. At the end of the service, we're going to pray for you. And we're also going to celebrate with you with what God is doing in your life. We also want to thank all our e-members, those of you all around the nation that are connected with us. We thank God for all our partners, our friends, our families, uh, all over the nation and even international. We thank God for you being so supportive of what we're doing here in Southwest Louisiana. Listen, we cannot do what we do without you and all of your support. Amen. So let's give our internet viewing audience and television viewing audience a big hand clap of praise. Amen. Also, if you are a first time viewer, go ahead and click in the comment section. I am a first time viewer and within 48 hours, someone will be able to will contact you just to welcome you to Living Word Christian Center. Also, if this is your first time fellowshipping with us in person in the house, I just need you to wave your hands in the air. If we have any first time visitors, just wave your hands in the air. Praise God. Amen. We thank God for you. Praise God. We welcome you here to Living Word Christian Center and we are excited to have you fellowshipping with us and as we always say to all our first time visitors welcome to your next level and make yourself at home amen come on let's give all our first time visitors a big hand clap online and in the house also we're going to ask that you fill out that little card that's inside your visitors package and, at, and while we're doing tithes and offering we want you to drop that in to the uh, tithes and offering uh, bucket there and that way we can keep in touch with you amen so we are happy to have you fellowshipping with us once again. Well, how are you doing today, Dr. Kathy? I am truly blessed and highly favored. I just want everybody to take a deep breath and just breathe in. Yes. And breathe out. And just breathe in one more time. And breathe out. I tell you, it's just an atmosphere shift. Yes. Bishop. I'm just blessed Amen. to be in his presence. You know, and that's the place we all want to be in the presence. How many of you just sense the peace of God right now? There's a peace. You know, when you're in the kingdom of God, there's peace that surpasses all understanding. When everything is going chaotic in the world, in the kingdom, we can have a peace 
to know that everything is going to be all right, that God is going to provide, God is going to protect, God is going to preserve, and God is going to lead and guide us. Amen. And so that's the peace you have when you're in the kingdom of God. And so I just sense the peace of God in this place. There's nothing missing, nothing lacking, nothing broken right now. Come on, whatever is broken, God is mending it back together. Come on, shout amen. Amen, he's putting it all back together again. And that is what is called in the kingdom of God, restoration. God is restoring everything back. You know, everything that you may have lost, I believe before you leave this earth, you're going to receive everything back. You know, the Bible says, yes, give him praise, give him glory. When the thief get caught, he has to pay back. Tell somebody, say, I want my seven time blessing. And God is going to restore it all back and it's going to be better than it, what it was before. And that's the kind of God we serve. He is the God of restoration. Amen. And he is also the God of breakthrough. Amen. He is the God that will break through for you and restore everything that the canker worms, the caterpillar, the palmer worms, and the locust has stolen from you and even the enemy. Hallelujah. So somebody just reach up to heaven and say, God, I receive divine restoration over my life in Jesus name. Give him praise and give him glory if you receive that today. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Well, praise God. Right now, we do have a few announcements that we would like to share with you. So those of you that are in the house, I want you to look at the monitors to my left and to my right. Those of you that are watching online, watch these announcements. Living Word Christian Center anointed announcements are as follows. For our members and visitors alike, you can visit us on the web at livingwordcc.org. While you're there, you can check out what's going on here at Living Word, and you can watch one of our past services. You can also sign up for our email newsletter or click on the Facebook or YouTube link to follow us online. We invite you to join us every Saturday morning at 8 a.m. for our group intercessory prayer call. Just dial 1-667-770-1113. And then when you are prompted, enter access code 199192, followed by the pound sign. To sign up to receive Living Word Christian Center text messages, just text Alert to 22300. Man Up will have its next meeting on May 8th at 9 a.m. in the Dream Center. <laughs> Living Word Christian Center Business Partner of the Week. Super Clean Express Detailing. Owner, Anthony Lubin, has mastered the skill of vehicle detailing and has over 20 years of experience in the auto detailing industry. Our company will meet all your vehicle detailing needs with consistency and excellence. We give every customer the five-star treatment. Our business hours are Monday through Friday, 7 a.m. to 5 p.m. and Saturdays, 7 a.m. to 3 p.m. Super clean express detailing, where your expectation is our motivation. To schedule your appointment today, please call us at area code 337-794-8423. We would like to wish everyone that has a birthday in the month of May a very happy and blessed birthday. And those members are Hilda Marcel, Terry Thomas, Miracle Ledette Goodley, Patrick Duhon, Elonda O'Brien, Bailey O'Brien, Crystal Stewart, Celise Stewart, Michelle Hawthorne, Janetra Prudham, Ethel Fields, Alexis Brown, Deborah Talbot, Kevin Anderson, Michelle Hall, Hadley Roger. Just a reminder, there's a birthday sign-up sheet in the foyer for June. Please print your name. We would like to wish everyone that has an anniversary in the month of May a very happy and blessed anniversary. And those members are 
George and Ophelia Sam Penny married for one year on May 15th. Kevin and Rosaline Anderson married for four years on May 25th. Just a reminder, there's an anniversary sign-up sheet in the foyer for the month of June. Please print your name. Last but not least, remember to tell someone about your Living Word Christian Center experience where we are living by the Word of God. And let's give the Lord a big hand clap of praise for those wonderful announcements and all those that are celebrating their anniversary and all those that are celebrating their birthday uh, this month. Let's give them all a big hand clap. Amen. Your birthday. It's your birthday. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank God you're still here to experience another year. Amen. That's to God be the glory. And I tell everybody this. I say, don't you ever be ashamed of how old you are. As long as you're here to see it, Thank you, Jesus. you better give God some praise. Amen. Yeah, I feel That's a blessing I right there to be able to experience another year and another birthday yeah. and another year to celebrate what God has done in your life. So I just tell somebody, say, I get better, I get better. as I get older. I'm like good wine. I get better over time. Amen. So I declare and I speak to your life that you will have a long, satisfied, prosperous, happy, blessed, strong, good life. And you're getting better and better each and every year. Yes, Bishop. And I'm going to say it like this. And you're going to look better. Every year. Yes, sir. I declare you're not yes, going to wear your age. Oh, I receive it, Bishop. I receive Hallelujah. it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So I look Ooh, better and better every year. Every year. I'm not Come aging. Bishop. I'm getting better. I'm getting better. Come on, Bishop. So I declare and decree that you're going to have an excellent month, an excellent year, and that your health is getting better yes. and better. I speak divine health over you. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. I touch you right now. Receive it in Jesus' name. (laughs) That was too much anointing not to be touched. Amen. (laughs) Amen. Praise God. So receive that in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Also, we do have a a couple of other announcements. Uh, We do, we are now, we now have our Instagram and Twitter account. Amen. Amen. So we're covering all the social media platforms, and if you want to go to our Instagram or get into our Instagram account, as well as our Twitter account, you can simply go to livingwordcc.org, which is our website, and when you go on the home page, you can click the Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, and Facebook, whatever link you would like to connect to. So we all want you to go to our Instagram account, our Twitter account, leave us comments, make comments, share some great information, and we're going to also be having... Uh, daily words of encouragement for you, uh, just sending you some things to just stay in touch, just to encourage you in your journey. Amen? And we have some youth that will be handling that yes. while we're sitting in church. They wanted to be able to Instagram out to the young people and and Twitter out to young people and, and TikTok and all everything else they're going to be doing. So they're going to be coming in starting next Sunday and they're going to be set in the back so they can TikTok and do all that while Bishop and I are teaching. So Amen. that way the young people can get the word and, and you know, we have others also can share as well. But they wanted to do that. So they're going to be coming in next week. They're going to begin with Brother Jerry so they can get signed on that they'd be able to do that for the church. And I'm so excited that they wanted to yes. be involved. So they'll be in ministry with, it, with what they do. You know, we can't do it real fast. We want to we listen. <laughs> We're trying to hear everything and write it down. They, they just... Yes. So the young people will be involved. Yes, I'm that's so excited great. About and we that. thank God for those young people that are stepping up yes. uh, to help take our ministry to the next level yes. through social media. Yes. Amen. And they came and asked, Pastor, how can we get involved? What 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 do you have need of? And they said we can do this and this and that. And I said, Well, y'all got that, that, and that. Just go with it. Amen. 
So we thank God next week we'll be having that. Also, those of you that are online, if, if there's someone on our Facebook page that makes a comment or, or has a question, feel free to respond. Amen. Feel free to share that information and respond to them. If, if it's a visitor or someone that said, hey, I'm w- welcome. To, I'm my first time tuning in. Uh, everybody ought to just say, hey, welcome to LWCC. Amen. Let them know that you're happy to have them tuning in with us today. And uh, so let's, let's, let's conversate with one another as we uh, take advantage of the social media platform. Yeah, I told them that the 50 plus got Facebook down. We, we like it. <laughs> We got Facebook. We're going to give them the other, other platform. Yeah, we yeah. got Facebook, Bishop. We got We that. got that. So we thank God for uh, those platforms. Also, uh, as we get ready to move in, we're into the month of May. Uh, yes, it's a good month. Amen. And uh, also, the, the seating should be coming in, uh, shipped out this month. Yes. Somebody give God some praise. Amen. So... Uh, we are believing that everything will be coming in by the end of this month, and then we can set up in the sanctuary uh, uh, and prepare uh, to transition back into the sanctuary. So we're, we want you to be prepared and pray for that. Also, as we're preparing to transition into the sanctuary, listen, we're going to need volunteers. Come on, y'all shout Amen. on that. Amen. Amen. Come on. We're going to need workers. We're going to need helpers and volunteers. We're going to need greeters. Uh, we're going to need ushers. Say amen. 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 We're going to also have people that have need in the media department because we're going to be running a massive production when we get back over there. But mainly we're going to need greeters and ushers to help uh, help the people to navigate how to get in the building, where to sit. Uh, also parking attendants, where to park and those type of things. So we're going to be operating on a full-fledged uh, level when we get there. So, Hallelujah. yes, if you're interested in, in working in any one of those areas, make sure you see one of us or one of our leaders after service. Well, you know, when you're kingdom and when you're attending a kingdom embassy, you don't volunteer. You have an assignment. So everyone in the kingdom should have an assignment. You know, we're not just bench warmers. We are assigned to a house to do a work. So everyone needs to find their assignment and sign up. So if you haven't found your assignment yet, we're going to have things at the table so you can find your assignment and just sign up for your assignment. So you need to find something to do in the embassy of the Lord. It's only on Sunday and maybe and sometimes Wednesdays. So find something to do so you can say, God, I'm connected to the kingdom. It's not a volunteer basis. It is because I'm in the house. So you want to make sure that's another blessing that flows into your house. There's so many blessings that's connected to working in the house of God. Amen? Yes, yes. So let's make sure we prepare as we get ready to do that and make that transition that we're going to be covered on every area. Amen? Uh, Once we transition over there, there will be no holes to be filled. Uh, Everything will be in place. And if you were here Wednesday night, in order. Amen. Amen. That was a blessing. Amen. Let's give Dr. Kathy a big hand. For that, if you have not listened to last Wednesday's message, please do so. Uh, Go back and listen to that, talking about getting in order. Uh, It was amazing, so we were really blessed by that. And also, the week before last, Brother James did a great job of sharing about getting into the Word of God. Amen. Amen. So you need to be here. And also, when we transition back to the sanctuary, we will be running full-fledged on our Wednesday night service. Amen. Amen. Midweek service is praise and worship. Worship is going to go to another level. Everything is going to be amazing, even on a midweek service, and we will still be getting you out around 8 o'clock. Amen? Amen. So get ready for that. It's going to be a power-packed midweek service. Amen. Now, are you ready to bless the Lord with your tithes and your offering? Yes! How many of you know the Bible say God loves a cheerful cheerful giver? giver. If you're going to be giving your tithes and offering today, right now, the ushers are moving around. They do have the envelopes where you can give your tithes, your offering, your gifts and surprises, whatever the Lord puts on your heart. Amen. Uh, Get prepared. We have four ways in which you can give. And one of the ways that you can give, you can simply give even in-house by texting. And there's the information. If you would like to text in your tithes and offering, uh, the information is right there on the bottom of the screen. Also, you can go to livingwordcc.org. 
which is our website, and you can click the donate button right there, and you can give your tithes and offering. And once you do so, don't forget to hit the submit button. Of course, you can always mail in your tithes and offering, and there is the information right there. Just mail it in. Don't forget to put a stamp on your envelope. Amen. Put your stamp there. And of course, you can always make arrangements to stop by our campus here uh, with one of our administrators, and you can drop off your tithes and offering, and they will receive it and make sure that it gets placed in the proper position. Amen. Well, if you're ready to go through your tithes and offering confession, I want you to put your hands together real good as Brother Jeffrey Jackson. Hallelujah. Us through our tithes and offering. Hallelujah. 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 We're all the blessed people in the house this morning. Hallelujah. Come on, now I can get a better hallelujah than that. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Do me a favor. Repeat this after me. Say, God's word, God's word is bigger than my bank account. Bank account. Say, God's word, God's word is bigger than my bills. Than my bills. And, God's and God's word is bigger than my business. See, when you get a revelation of that, when you start believing that, that's when increase is going to come to your house. God's word is bigger than your bills. It's bigger than your bank account. I don't care how much you have in the bank. It's bigger than your bank account. And we're going to look at the scripture that Bishop has given us for the month of May, which tremendously blessed me when he gave this to me. We're going to look at David's final instructions to Solomon. If you want to be successful, you're in the right house. If you want to be successful, I'm going to say that again. If you want to be successful, you're in the right house. You under the right anointing. I don't care what Aunt Susie tell you or Uncle Bobo. You in the right house. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm a living witness of that. You in the right house. Let's look at 1 Kings chapter 2. When I came to this church, I was so broke, my knees had needs. I'm going to say it again. When I came to this church, I was so broke, my knees had needs. No money. So don't tell me what God can't do. Let's look at, we're going to be reading 1 Kings chapter 2. I'll be reading in the New Living Translation. If you can put that on the screen. 1 Kings chapter 2. We're going to look at David's final instructions to his son Solomon. Starting at verse 3. The scripture reads, observe the requirements of the Lord your God and follow his ways not your job ways not what your homeboy tell you not what your homegirl tell you follow his ways keep the decrees commands regulations and laws written in the law of Moses so that you will be successful in all you do and wherever you go. See, that's enough to shout about right there. If you want to be successful, do what God has commanded you to do. Stand to your feet. Let's make our confessions. You want to be successful, stop listening to your coworker. If you want to be successful, stop listening to your best friend. God has given you the answer. He's given you the prescription. All you have to do is just take the medicine. Repeat this after me. Shout increase. Increase. Come on, you got to say it like you mean it now. Shout increase. Increase. Breakthrough. Breakthrough. Overflow. Overflow. Father, Father, you are are the God God of more than enough. enough. Therefore, Therefore, All my needs needs are met met according to to your riches riches in glory. glory. I live live in overflow. overflow. I'm blessed coming in. I'm blessed blessed going out. I'm I'm highly favored. favored. 
your uncommon and unmerited favor surrounds me like a shield. I live in the favor zone. My bills are paid on time. Debts canceled and paid in full. I'm a lender, not a borrower. I have the power to get wealth. The windows of heaven are open to me because I'm a tither. Satan will not rob me in my finances. My mind is renewed. I'm a blessing magnet. I'm blessed to be a blessing. Wealth and riches are in my house. The enemy has been rebuked for my sake. In Jesus' name, if you believe that, shout amen. Hallelujah. Go forth, ushers. Faithful, faithful, faithful is our God. Everybody say faithful. Faithful, 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 faithful is our God. Oh, faithful, 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 faithful is our God. Oh, he's faithful, 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 faithful is our God. I'll repay when the harvest God promised me. Take back what the devil stole from me. Now rejoice today. For I shall recover. Yes, I rejoice today. I shall recover. stand. Let's stand and come in agreement with our tithes and offering. We shall recover it all. I don't care what the devil has stolen from you. The scripture says that you shall recover it all. And we're going to come in agreement this morning. Father, in the name of Jesus, we just thank you, Lord God, for restoring us back to the Garden of Eden, Lord. We thank you, Lord God, that we shall recover it all. And Father God, we just thank you, Lord God, for favor. We thank you, Lord God, for increase. We thank you for multiplication, Lord. We thank you for debt cancellation, Lord. Father, we thank you the same anointing that's on this house will be on our house, Father. We thank you, Lord God, for the anointing of increase, Lord. And Father God, we just thank you, Father God, in advance. We praise you in advance, Lord God. And we just thank you, Lord God, that you're going to do what your word says that you're going to do, Father. You said it, Lord God. We believe it, Father God, and we receive it, and we call it so. Right now, Father, in the name of Jesus, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Amen. How many received that? Yes, yes. Increase and overflow. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Expect that to manifest in your life. Hallelujah. Listen, don't you give up on God because he won't give up on you. If he promised it to you, he is well able to perform that which he has promised. Yes. Amen. So right now, as we prepare our hearts to partake of the Lord's Supper, normally, as you know, on the first of every month, the first Sunday of every month, we partake of the Lord's Supper. And this is an opportunity for us to partake of the Lord's Supper. Amen. We're going to partake of the precious blood of Jesus, the precious blood that covers and washes away all our sins. And we're going to partake of his body that was bruised and crushed yes, 
for us. And it's because of the precious blood that by his stripes, we now are healed. Now, we're not going to be healed. We are healed. We already healed. Are you? Come on, somebody shout, I am healed. Amen. The scripture says it's by his stripes we are are healed. healed. Present tense. No matter what you're feeling right now, there is healing made available for you today. Amen. And so when you look at that, you examine yourself to make sure that you're worthy to partake of the Lord's Supper. The scripture says in the book of Acts, if you take of the Lord's Supper unworthy, many sleep because of that. So right now, Father, we ask that you forgive us of all of our sins. Father, we ask that you forgive us of all our iniquities and transgressions. Father, we repent right now as we prepare our hearts to partake of your precious blood. Let that blood wash us. Let that blood cleanse us. Let it wash away all our guilt, all our shame, and let it wash away every every stain. Father, we thank you in advance and we give you we give you glory and father we will partake of your blood and your body until your son jesus christ returns again in jesus mighty name right now we're going to put you in the hands of the ushers we're going to ask that as you grab your elements that you take it back to your seat and we're all going to partake of the lord's supper together please stand the blood that Jesus shed for me way back on Calvary it's the blood strength from day to day it will never never lose it's it's power it soothes my doubt all of my fears and it dries all my tears it's the blood and it gives me strength from death
have received of the Lord, that which also I deliver to you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, he took the bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. Let us partake of the Lord's body. And after the same manner also, he took the cup when he had supped it, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do you often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Let us partake the precious blood of Jesus. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you do show the Lord's death until he return again. May the Lord bless the reading of his holy scripture. Thank you, Jesus. in the presence of the Lord. Ooh, thank you, Thank Jesus. you for the blood, the blood, the thank blood. Thank you, Jesus. Sometimes when you don't even know what to say, thank just say, you, Satan, Jesus. the blood of Jesus Ooh, is against you. you. The blood, the blood. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Yes. Thank God for his blood. He freely gave it to us. And we ought to use it. Because it never, ever loses its power. Never loses mm. power. That same blood over 2,000 years ago. How I many you know it still has the same power? Ooh. Glory to God. The blood still works. Yes, it does. Look at somebody say the blood still works. Yeah, it still works. We just got to work it. Amen. Hallelujah. Listen, we got to let these children go to children's church. Amen. Right now, we're going to dismiss all the young people to children's church. Something about we the plead blood. The blood of Jesus over the children. Yes, My we plead the God. blood of Jesus. We cover them in the blood. These are all our blessed and highly favored young people. Amen. Our future lawyers and doctors and entrepreneurs, scholarship recipients. Yes, give them a big hand. It's a lot of. Ooh, yes. 
Come on, Bishop. Yes. Amen. Honor row and banner row students. Glory. We speak it over their lives every week. Amen. These are also our future engineers, pastors, evangelists, prophets, and apostles, and teachers. We speak it over their lives, and we believe that they will be a blessing to this society. They will not be a menace to this society. They will be good husbands and good wives and good mothers and good fathers. And Father, I just ask that you be a hedge of protection all around our young people. Jesus, be a fence all around them, keeping them every day, protecting them from all harm and danger and unseen danger and trouble in the name of Jesus we cover them right now with a pastoral covering as well as a parental covering and we thank God for every parent that is training them and every parent that is raising them up in the fear and the admonition of the Lord father we pray that you will give the parents wisdom and knowledge and understanding on how to train and raise their children that they will maximize their full potential in the name of Jesus. And we ask that you bring the best out in them. In Jesus' name we pray. Let everybody shout amen. Amen. Glory to God. Somebody shout, my children are blessed. They're blessed to be a blessing. My child, they are highly favored. Everywhere they go, doors will open opportunities will be presented and they will accomplish everything that God has for them to accomplish. Give God some praise if you believe that. You are the key. You are the key and you are the prophet to your child's future. I'm talking to parents today. Amen. You are the key and the prophet over your child's future. So therefore, I declare that you ought to prophesy over your child every day. Speak life to them. Now, I'm I'm going to help you a little more uh, because sometimes the parents in this generation, they might not understand all this. But but can I talk to some grandparents? Yeah, sometimes as grandparents, see, you play an instrumental role as well in your grandchildren's future. And if they mama don't know what to do, Come on, you as a grandparent, you can begin to be the prophet over that grandchild. And you can speak life to that child. Amen? So begin to exercise your God-given authority. Yes, you can say it. I just got to say one thing, and I'm going to be real short. Because you need, when God sends you a child, whether it's a grandchild or a child, the first thing you do is ask God, God, what is this child's purpose? Because the first thing you need to know is what were they created to do so that you can train them up in the way that they should go. That's what that scripture means. You're going to automatically raise them to be Christian children. But training them up in the way that they should go means, now that I know what they're created to do, let me guide them to be a doctor. Let me put them in the best school to make sure that they're a doctor. Let me put them in science labs and science camp in the summer. Let me train them up so they don't have to wonder when they're in the 12th grade. Well, what you gonna do now? Mm -hmm. That's your job to know, not his. Yes. So if you understand what God has given you, everything about them should line up with what they are created to do. So you're not just giving a child with no instruction if you know how to pray. We knew when my son was born that he would play ball. We also knew that he would pastor. So everything we did was to train him up It's not a happenstance that he plays very well. It's because God called him to that. It's a calling. It's not just something he loves. He loves to do, but it's a calling. So Bishop and I trained him in that and made sure it was there. 
we train him in the word so that he can go to the next level. So I'm just giving you a, just a little nugget. Don't just take him and just love him and bring him to church. Find out what it is that's called to Amen. do. Amen. Amen. Tell somebody, say, discover the purpose. Discover, discover the, the purpose. purpose. Amen. And, and, you know, along with that, a lot of us, we, we didn't know our purpose because no one led us and told us about purpose. And we just kind of fell in where we can get in. Amen. But see, you're learning better. So now you can do better and you can help your child discover his purpose at a young age so you can train him up in the way that he should go to accomplish his purpose. Amen. Say amen to that. Hallelujah. Now get your Bibles out. That, that's going to be for the family conference. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Get your Bibles out. Hold them up high in the air. And, you know, that's good for those that have young children that are uh, under one years old or two years old, three years old. You must understand when a child is 16 and 17 and 18, he has no clue of what he wants really to do. Very few do. Amen. And that's where you come in as the mouthpiece and the prophet. You hear from heaven concerning his life. Amen. Glory to God. You got those Bibles up high in the air? Now, are you waving them around like you do care? Amen. Now, but while they're waving them around, you are supposed to tell them to share, share, share. <laughs> Amen. Like, like, like. Amen. Click, like, You can and use share. your microphone. Click, like, I'm sorry. <laughs> Click, like, and share. Make sure you share this with everyone you know. If you've been blessed by the messages we've been teaching, don't be greedy. Share it with somebody. Say, you know what? I know somebody need to hear this. Mm -hmm. You know, Shaquita and them need to hear this message. I need to share this with them. They need something. So share that with all our cousins, our friends, our aunties, our uncles, grandmama and them, Pook and them, everybody. Biffy, everybody you know. Just share it with everybody. Don't be scared. Just share, share, share. Mm -hmm. Like, like, like. In Amen. Jesus' name. Let's go. Let's get ready to get into the Word of God. Hold those Bibles up and repeat after me. Say, this is my Bible. This is my Bible. I can have what it says I can have. I can do what it says I can do. I am. I am. What it says I am. Right now, I'm about to receive the incorruptible Word of God. My mind is receptive. My heart is prepared. I will never be the same. Never, 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 never. Be the same in Jesus' name. Say amen to that if you receive that. Amen. Now, before we get into the Word of God, I want to go through this confession that uh, the Lord put on my heart that I want to share with you mostly every time we come together. I want you to repeat after me. Say, God's plan for me is bigger than me. God's thoughts concerning my purpose are higher than mine. God's ways of doing things are better than mine. I yield to God's will and God's way for my life. In Jesus' name, say amen to that. Amen. Glory to God. His will and his ways are better than my ways. Amen. Hallelujah. Let's get ready to get into the Word of God. Well, we're not going to be with you before you too long today, but I believe we have something that will bless you, that will help you, uh, that will also remove you from a grasshopper mentality. Yes. Amen. Most of you have now are now are taking on a kingdom mentality or a kingdom mindset. And today we're going to just build a little more on top of you becoming and being a kingdom citizen. Amen. Now, let's go to the book of Acts. I'm going to go to the book of Acts chapter 14, and we're going to go to verse number 33. And I'm going to ask that you stand for the reading of God's word. Acts chapter 14, verse 22. I'm, I'm sorry. Uh, yeah. Acts chapter 14 and 22. Amen. When you get there, say, I got it. Amen. Now, I'm going to read it in the King James Bible, and then uh, you may have your seat, and then I want to read it in the Amplified. Amen. Let's read together. I'm going to ask that you read with me together. Verse number 22. Let's go. Confirming the souls of the disciples and exhorting them to continue in the faith and that we must go through much tribulation, enter into the kingdom of 
God. You may have a seat in the presence of the Lord. Let's look at it in the Amplified. If we can pull that up, look what it says, and uh, it's on the monitors. Strengthening and establishing the hearts of the disciples, encouraging them to remain firm in the faith, saying, it is through many, underline many, tribulations, underline tribulations, and hardships that we must enter the kingdom of God. Hold that right there. I want, I want to get this really profound, and I want you to begin to think about this. Through many tribulations and hardships that we must enter the kingdom of God. Somebody say amen. amen. Today, I want to share with you glory in the middle of tribulations. Glory in the middle. Somebody shout, in the middle of tribulation. Now, today we're going to minister about how to handle trials and tribulations from a kingdom perspective. Now, did y'all get that? We're going to minister to you about how to handle, or another word we can use, deal with trials and tribulations from a kingdom perspective. And as kingdom citizens, I want you to get this, you are not exempt from going through trials and tribulations. Somebody ought to just say, ouch. Amen. Because if I'd have said you're about to get a million dollars, you would have shouted right there. But, but here's the irony of this thing. As we are teaching you about the kingdom of God and how to enter into the kingdom of God and how to live a kingdom life and how to set your affections on things above and not on things that are temporal or in this earth, you're going to find out that we're going to be balanced in our teaching to you about the kingdom of God. Amen. You know, it would be erroneous for us to God, amen, about the kingdom of God and never tell you that you're going to go through some things. Because a lot of times when we talk about the kingdom of God and we share about the kingdom of God, in the kingdom, everything is really okay. Everything is well. Everything is already taken care of. Everything is already uh, done. But understand that as well as you are in the kingdom, you will go through some trials and tribulation. Yes, Being in the kingdom of God will help you, I'm going to use this word, to cope or to deal with the trials and tribulations. Amen. See, when you are a kingdom citizen and you have a kingdom mindset, when you are facing trials and tribulation, you won't crumble under the pressure. Amen. You won't allow the enemy to cause you to lose your faith while you're going through that trial and tribulation. Yes, sir. Now, when we look here uh, in, the, in the book of Acts chapter 14, Paul is talking and he has just uh, helped a lot of believers get saved and born again over in Iconia and in, in, in a place called Lystra and all these places. And he was simply telling them now, he says, confirming the souls of the disciples. He says, and exhorting them to continue in the faith. Now, these individuals have just came into the kingdom of God. And he says, I want to confirm their souls. I want to, so that that's their mind, their will, and their emotion. I want to make sure that they have a mental understanding or a good mindset of what they are about to get into. Not only are they coming into the kingdom of God, but I want to let them know what they're going to face once they're coming into the kingdom of God. Amen. Now watch what he says here. He says, I want to exhort them to continue in the faith and that we must go through much tribulation, trials, hardships, entering into the kingdom of God. He was letting them know that you are now coming into the, the kingdom of God. You are saved. You are born again. You, you, you have come into this grace. I want you to remain solid in your faith. 
Because as soon as you come into my kingdom or enter into my kingdom, guess what you can expect? Trials, tribulation. You can expect things to start going out of control. You can expect the enemy to come after you. You can expect things to get crazy in your world. But Amen. that is a sure sign that you're entering into the kingdom of God. Amen. Can somebody say amen? Amen. Amen. So he is preparing them. And I want you to know that there is glory. You can have glory in the middle of your tribulation and your trials. Because there are three people. Either you are going through a trial or a tribulation right now. Number two, either you just came out of one. Or number three, you're going to enter into it. You inside one right now. Amen. You're about to enter in. So in the if from a kingdom perspective, you must understand that these things are going to happen as you move into the kingdom of God. Now So you know the what you said, Bishop, is true. It is because you are in the kingdom of God that trials and tribulations will come. It brings attack. The kingdom of God will come bring an attack upon you because now the enemy knows that the power of God is working through you. He is not against you as a human. He's against you as a God kingdom citizen. So he hates God. You're not even the issue. So it's because you are in the kingdom and the kingdom is in you. He's yes. coming against the kingdom of God that's in you. So when the kingdom of God is in you, it's because you're in the kingdom, it, it attacks, uh, it attracts, attracts attack. attack. And once you are given a kingdom assignment, all hell tries to break loose to stop your assignment. So if you're working on an assignment, you can uh, uh, expect attack. If you're not doing anything, you're probably doing good. You're probably cool. So if you're not being attacked, you need to check if you're in the kingdom at all. Yes. So it's an honor to be attacked because you know that God is with you and the devil cannot take you out. Amen. Amen. And that's why we're calling this glory in the middle of your tribulations. Amen. And you're going to see a little more of this just like she is talking about. There will be ta attacks launched at you. Now, where is the kingdom of God? In us. Remember, we went over that last week. Amen. The kingdom of God is where? In us. In us. And so the enemy is attacking the kingdom that's within you. Amen. But because you are in the kingdom and the kingdom is in you, therefore he will come after you. Amen. Amen. But he cannot hurt you or harm you. He's only trying to get you off of your assignment. Amen. Now, as a kingdom citizen, you will face trials and tribulations. Somebody shout, I will go through some things. Now, now, I want you to get this. Because of who you are, you already been through some hell and high water, and you're still here. Amen. So that means you're getting the victory. You are winning over every one of Lucifer or Satan's attack because you're still standing firm in your faith. Now, watch this. Go with me to 1 Peter. Go to 1 Peter chapter 4. 1 Peter chapter 4 in the King James. I want you to go there real quickly, and we're going to look at verse number 12. The scripture prepares kingdom citizens for what they're going to go through. Look what it says in 1 uh, Peter chapter 4, verse number 12. It says, Beloved, he's talking to the believers here. Beloved, think it not strange concerning the fiery trials. Look, the fiery trials, which is what? is to what? To try you as though some strange thing happened unto you. Look at the next one. Look what it says. But rejoice in as much as you are what? Partakers of Christ's suffering. That when his glory, there's the word, now underline that word glory, that when his glory shall be revealed, <laughs> I'm trying not to jump ahead of myself. When his glory that shall be revealed, you may be glad also with what? Exceedingly joy. 
with exceedingly, overwhelmingly happy and with joy. Now, let's look at it again. I want to read it real slow. Beloved, think it not strange concerning the fiery trials which is to try you. So he is letting you know whenever you're going through something, don't be overwhelmed. Don't think it's, it's strange. Don't trip out. Why is it happening to me? He says, as though some strange things are happening. He says, but you rejoice. Inasmuch as you are what? Partakers, Partakers of Christ's suffering. Stop. How many of you know Christ suffered? So if we are partakers of Christ, we not only going to take part in all the good stuff, but we're going to take part in his suffering as well. Amen. So it's nothing wrong whenever you're going through a situation. In the kingdom of God, kingdom citizens, we will go through some strange things. We will go through some fiery trials. We will go through some tribulation, but don't think it's strange. In other words, don't think, why is it happening to me? I'm saved, I'm born again. Why is it happening to me? The reason why it's happening to you is because the kingdom of God resides on the inside of you. And the enemy will always come against God's kingdom. So he says, this is what he says, whenever you're going through fiery trials, whenever you're going through some strange things, this is what he said in verse number 13. I love it. He says, but rejoice. Look at somebody and say rejoice. rejoice. Because you are partakers of Christ's suffering. How many of you know it's an honor and a privilege, and a privilege to suffer with Christ? Amen. Amen. Now, I'm not going to get a good amen there. <laughs> See, in the kingdom, you want me to tell you everything going to be all right. You're not going to go through nothing. I would be wrong if I teach you that. That is error. Amen. It's true, but it's not the whole truth. Right. So, do you want the whole truth or you want some of the truth? Do you want only the good part? Or do you want all the parts? Because see, if you don't know how to deal with the suffering part, you then you're going to fall under pressure. Because as long as you're in the kingdom of God, you will face some pressure. You will face some trials. You will face some tribulation. But you need to know how to rejoice in the middle of it all. Hallelujah. And, and the, the worst thing that happens is people always say, well, I thought you were saved. Why are you going through this? I thought you were saved. Say, it's because I'm saved, I'm going through it. Yes. That's your, and because I'm kingdom, I'm going through it. The reason why you don't go through nothing because you're not kingdom. When you get like me, you're going to start seeing God bring you through every time. Yes. And every victory takes you to another level because the enemy will use other people around you to say, if you was really saved, you wouldn't be going through that. Come on. Your trial is a definite indication that you're saved, kingdom, filled with the Holy Ghost. And a trial is different than just going through trouble because you brought it on yourself. Now, there's yes. two different things. That's God will send trials to make you stronger and to mature you. But say, I'm going through a trial. I'm not troubled. Yes. That's the difference. Because people will tell you, I thought you were safe, said I am. That's why I can yes. handle this. I'm not like you. You would be broken down for with the things I've been through. I'm saved, sanctified, and that's why I can handle it because I'm kingdom. Amen. And so we're going to identify, watch this, we're going to identify with Christ's suffering. Yes, sir. If you want to be like him, you got to identify with everything he went through. Because when he walked the earth, at earth as a human, how I many you know he identified with everything that we go through? He went through everything. He went through feelings. He went through all of his emotions. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? Why? Because the enemy was attacking him on every hand. He was lied on. How many of you know you're going to be lied on? You're going to be talked about. See, you are identifying with his suffering. Why? Because you are a partaker of him. But notice what he says. You're going to go through all of that. You're going to go through all of the suffering. You're going to go through all the trials and tribulation. But notice what he says in verse 13. But when his glory, 
<laughs> but when his glory shall be revealed, you're going to be what? Glad with what? Exceeding joy. I want you to know trouble. Come on, can somebody shout amen? See, it's going to be over with God. Listen, God has put a expiration date on your trial. Y'all ain't going to shout amen. God has a limit on how much the enemy can mess with you. And he has put an expiration date on your tribulations. So God says, but when the glory is revealed, guess what's going to happen? You're going to be glad. So in going through, how many of you know God is going to show his glory when you come out? Amen. 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 Yes. His glory, come listen, his glory will be revealed when you come out. When I come out. Look at somebody and say, when I come out, when I come out. See, as surely as you are a kingdom citizen, you will come out that trial. As, as long yes. as you are a kingdom citizen, you're going to come out of those tribulations. And what's going to happen when you come out, people are going to see the glory of the Lord, of the Lord that delivered you and brought you out. When others were going to lose, when others lost their mind, you came out with your hands lifted high. When others lost their faith, you came out with greater faith. Y'all ain't going to shout amen. I'm about to, I'm trying not to preach too much. When others lost their faith, that trial and tribulation brought great faith on you. And how many of you can attest that you've been through some battles? How many of you can attest you've been through some fights? How many of you can attest you've been through some attacks? But through it all, somebody shout, God got the glory out of all of it. Come on now, Bishop. Come on, you preacher. And you're going to have glory is going to meet you. Yes. Watch this. Glory is going to meet you oh, no. from now on. Watch this. In the middle. Oh, in the yes. middle of your trial. So in the yes. middle of your trial, God is going to release his glory. Come on, what did that mean? God is going to give you the ability. Yes. Watch this. To withstand the pressure that the enemy is putting on you. God said, I'll clothe you in my glory. In the middle of your tribulation. And there's nothing the devil can do to stop you. Now, go with me to John 16. Got to give you a little more scripture. That's it. That's it. That's it. Go to John chapter 16. Yes. Hallelujah. Tell somebody, say, we got to be balanced in this thing. One thing I love about, one thing I love about the word of God, uh, when you teach it, we have to teach it to be balanced. Right. Amen. So now what am I doing? I'm equipping you for the next trial. Yes, sir. I'm equipping you when you go through the next tribulation. I'm equipping you for when the devil comes against you again. You're going to know how to handle it. I'm giving you divine instructions on how to hang on in there until God removes that trial and that tribulation. Come on now. So that's kingdom. Come on, bitch. That's it. That's, that's it. kingdom. Yes. Amen? Yes, yes. Now, are you over there in, in John chapter 16, verse wow. number 33? I'm going to look at it in the King James, and then we'll look at it in the Amplified. Look what it says, John 16 and 33. These things, and Jesus is talking here. He says, these things I have spoken unto you. Mm -hmm. And he was talking to the disciples as well as believers. These things I have spoken unto you. Here is a key point. That in me, you might have peace. Yes, sir. So where is your peace? In In Christ Jesus. He just said it in his word. That in me, you might have peace. Now watch what he says here. In the world, you shall have what? Tribulations. Are you in this world? We're in the world, but we are not of the world. We're in Christ, and in Christ we have what? Peace. So he says here, in the world, you shall have tribulation. But be of good cheer, but rejoice. I have overcome the world. Watch it and let's look at it in the Amplified. John 16 and 33 in the Amplified. These things I have spoken unto you. 
Look, let's go to John 16 and 33. I have told you these things so that in me you may have perfect peace. Look what, look what the amp says. Perfect peace. Stop right there. That, that's not a peace that means your peace won't be disturbed. That perfect peace means that you are mature enough to handle whatever goes on in your world. So if all hell break loose, you're mature enough to keep peace. Amen. You have mature, grown-up peace. That means I'm not going to worry about what's going on around me. He says, I have told you these things so that in me you may have perfect peace. In the world you have tribulation and distress and suffering. Why y'all ain't reading with me? Y'all don't like them words, huh? And suffering. But be courageous. Be confident. Be undaunted. And be what? Say it with me. And be what? Filled with joy. I have what? Overcome the world. My conquest is accomplished and my victory is abiding. My victory is right now. How many of you know that you can have peace when there's chaos all around you? Jesus has already overcame everything that we can face in this world. And he says, in this world, you will have tribulations, but there's the word again. But what? Be of good cheer. Rejoice because he has already given you the victory. I'd rather, you know, I know when we started off, we said that it's because you're in the kingdom that trials and tribulation comes. But you're going to have trials and tribulations with or without God. Yes. So you have to choose if you want to go through it with God mm. or if you want to go through it without God. We're just telling you what to do with God. Yes. Now, without God, I don't know how you're going to make it. That's between you and whoever else that you're dealing with. But doing it with God, you can have perfect peace anyway. Yes. So you need to shout when you have an alternative. If you don't have an alternative, you're going to still suffer. You're going to still have tribulations. You're going to still have hardships. Yes. It's going to be hard and you're going to have to deal with some things, but we're showing you how to do it in the kingdom yes. where God will soften the blow and make sure that you will not have to deal with it long and his glory will cover you so you won't have to go under. Yes. So you have a choice today. You can do it in the kingdom or you can, you can do, do it, it outside out the of kingdom. the kingdom, but you're going to do it. Yes. We're just giving you a choice on how you do it. So you choose today the kingdom or outside of the kingdom. Amen. That's the difference. That's it. Amen. And see, as kingdom citizens, we rejoice in the middle of tribulation. Hallelujah. Now, here's the key. Does that make sense in the natural? No, that don't make sense. In the natural, the world say when you're going through, you're supposed to complain. You're supposed to murmur. The world will say, watch this, when you're going through things, blame God. How many of you, had, how many of you heard people blame God for, for stuff that he didn't even have nothing to do with? See, that's the world's way. And, and they'll have you complaining about how hard it is and how distressed you are and how stressed out I am and, and how much anxiety I got and how difficult it is. No, that's not kingdom vernacular. That's right. Y'all ain't gonna shout amen. That's not a part of our lingo. Come on, bitch. See, in the kingdom when we're going through, we're supposed to be rejoicing. We're supposed to be giving God glory. Come on. We're supposed to have the God kind of faith yes. that say this too shall pass. We're supposed to say trouble don't last always. We're supposed to say weeping may endure for a night. Yes. Yeah, yeah, but joy, but joy is coming in the morning. We're supposed to say I know God going to see me through this. See, you can either choose to speak the kingdom talk or you can speak the world's talk. But here's the key. You will have Whatever you whatsoever say. you say. That's why I'm trying to line you up with the kingdom. So when you're facing a trial and tribulation, you're going to talk like a kingdom citizen talks. That's right. Now, let's go to another passage here. I want you to go with me to Romans chapter 5. Are y'all getting something out of this? See, you, you, you don't have to worry because you're in the kingdom. 
You just got to know how to outlast your trouble. Hallelujah. Outlast the devil. Amen. So you're going to be distressed sometimes. You're going to have suffering. But guess what? Be of good cheer. cheer. And I'm going to give you in a minute what cheer, uh, rejoice, and glory means. I'm going to show it to you right here in Romans chapter 5. Are you in Romans chapter 5? Hallelujah. Amen. Now watch what it says here. Romans chapter 5, verse number 1. Therefore, being justified by faith. I'm talking to kingdom citizens, right? You have been justified by faith. Therefore, being justified by faith, watch this. We have what? Peace with who? Through who? Our Lord Jesus Christ. Watch this. By whom also we have access by faith into this grace. That's powerful right there. We have access by faith through Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, into his grace. Wherein, watch this, we stand. And what? Rejoice in hope of the glory of God. Watch this. And not only so, but we... I'm going to let you read it. But we... But we glory where? In tribulations also. Look at somebody and say, I got glory in the middle of my tribulations. And not only so, but we what? Glory. Underline that word glory. We glory in tribulations also. Why? Knowing that tribulation worketh what? Tell somebody, say, you just need some patience. Patience, hallelujah. The New King James Version says that we also knowing that tribulation worketh perseverance. Come on, Bishop. Yes, sir. Verse 4, and patience, experience, and experience hope. hope. Watch this. And hope made it not a shame because the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost, which is what? Given unto us. Now, jump back to verse number three. Somebody say, that's, that's some good that's stuff some right good there. Stuff. Therefore, verse one says, therefore being justified by faith. Now, when we look at that word, therefore, we often wonder, why is it there? <laughs> what is therefore? Huh? What is it? <laughs> therefore. Therefore. But whenever you see, watch this now, whenever you see therefore, therefore is really a connection to something that was previously released or previously said. Now, when you go into Romans chapter 4 and you look at 17 through 25, you find out that God was dealing with Abraham. Mm -hmm. And he said, Abraham, I'm going to give you a son even in your old age. Yes. And you and Sarah will have a son and the nations will come out of you. And so notice here, that's when Abraham did not stagger at the promises of God. Abraham was not weak in faith and he did not even consider the deadness of his body and the deadness of Sarah's womb. Are you seeing what I'm saying? He did not waver at the promise that God gave him. He was fully persuaded yes, that what, what God had promised him, he would be well able to bring it to pass. Yes, sir. And we find out because Abraham believed it was imputed unto him as righteousness. Come on, are y'all seeing what I'm saying? Abraham believed what God said by faith. He believed by faith what God promised him. And that's why whenever Paul starts in chapter 5 in Romans, he says, therefore, being now justified by what? By faith. Abraham was declared righteous by faith. It was imputed unto him righteous. So now he is talking to the believers. And now he is saying, just like it was imputed to righteousness, a righteousness was imputed to Abraham when he believed by faith, I'm about to do the same thing to you. Amen. Now, therefore, being now you justified by faith, watch this. You now have peace with God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Tell somebody, say, I got peace with God. 
through Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. Okay, let me give you the message Bible version of what Bishop just said. We just went through, in 2020, we went through tribulations and trials. We had, I want to show you kingdom trials first. When you're going through a trial in the kingdom and tribulation, we went through two hurricanes, a flood, coronavirus, ice storm. ice storm. Those were tribulations and trials. Some of you lost your houses, you lost your cars, you lost everything. But even with all of that, come on, you still had a place of provision that God yes. had you come get your food. You didn't have to worry about it. You had boxes of food. You had diapers. You had everywhere you can come because even in the tribulation, God provided. You had boxes on top of boxes in your cars where food was provided. You can drive up through the driveway at church come and on. God kept providing. Body. You still had trials and tribulations, but it was a kingdom type of trial and tribulation were you suffering yes because you lost your house but were you hungry no no did that's a trial and tribulation but it was done the kingdom way god still provided god still covered you had more stuff than you yes. needed you were sharing with your neighbor come on you was going through a lot but you still, still had an overflow in your house that's when you're going through trials and tribulation when you're in the kingdom now, the world couldn't find food because everything was gone. They were looking and trying to search. The world had to come to the kingdom to find food. Yes. They had to find somewhere to get something to eat because the kingdom was flowing and overflow, yes. even though they still lost their house, even though everything was towed up from the floor, up. even though they couldn't get their house fixed, even though the, the adjuster was still treating them bad. But they didn't want for nothing because the kingdom was covered. Yes. That's when you're dealing with trials and tribulations tribulations in the kingdom. Yes. So when, when Bishop says that there will be trials and tribulations, but he's teaching us the kingdom way, Wait, you still it? was having joy. We had our music going and serving everybody else and we were dancing yes. and we had hot meals and cold meals and you had boxes of meals, you had diapers, you had everything you needed, you had socks and shoes, but it was kingdom trials yes. and tribulations. That's the difference when you're suffering in the kingdom. Kingdom, amen. God will protect you and make sure you have everything you need. Yes. That's why you don't have to worry about nothing. And, you got in line and, when yeah, you wanted to get How many of you had a peace about it? Come on, how many of you had a peace about it? Didn't feel good, but you kept your peace, amen? And I want you to know, nothing. we serve more people in the world than we did Christians. We had the world, people that were not saved, coming in looking for supplies. See, when you're in the kingdom of God, you can have a peace that God will meet every one of your needs. He will supply all of your needs according to his riches in glory. But and we so were, we have a peace about it. We were all hit the same way. But we had a different outcome. Yes. That's when you're in the kingdom. Kingdom. God will still supply all your needs according to his riches and glory through Christ Jesus. Yes. Now, look at verse 3. And not only so, here it is, but we glory in tribulations also, knowing that tribulations worketh patience. Now, yes, sometimes, how many of you know, during what we went through, we just had to be patient. patient. Everything came. We just had to what? Wait in line. Just be patient. We had to wait, amen? Or we had to pers uh, persevere. Yes. And persevere just simply means that you have joy when you're going through a trial. Yes. You're able to endure it with happiness. Yes. Amen? And so what Jesus is saying and what Paul is talking about here, he says we glory in tribulation. Now, when we look at that word glory, that word glory is in the, in, in, in the Hebrew or the Greek, it is the same meaning for the word rejoice. Hallelujah. Did y'all know that? It's the same meaning for the word rejoice. It simply means that glory and rejoice simply means to celebrate. Hallelujah. It means to boast on. It means to brag on. It also means to exalt. Yes. Amen. So let's look at it like this. Not only so, but we celebrate. 
in tribulation. We brag on God in tribulation. We exalt God in tribulation. We boast on our God in the middle of tribulation. Amen. So whenever the king, whenever you're in the kingdom way, the kingdom, in, the kingdom of God is this. When you're going through, you begin to exalt your king. Come on, Bishop. You begin to rejoice. Amen. Why? Why do you rejoice? Because you know that your king has an expiration date on that tribulation. You know that the king of glory, come on, somebody shout amen. amen. He is working something out in you. He is working something on you. He is working your patience. He is showing you how to be, be able to hang on in there until he shows up. See, in the middle, you got to know how to rejoice. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Yes, and in the middle of that, you can still have hope. Knowing that God is going to deliver you out of that situation. So we find that, that that's the glory. Amen. The glory of God will always be revealed. Somebody shout, he's going to reveal his glory. Amen. If I know how to rejoice. That's why you can't let, watch this. That's why you can't let the devil steal your shout. Some of you holler about it, oh, I don't shout, I don't like doing all that. But no, you're shouting, amen? That's a sign of your victory. The Bible says, shout unto the Lord. Shout unto the Lord with the voice of triumph. Tell somebody, say, don't you let the devil steal your shout. Don't you let the devil stop you from celebrating. Don't you let the devil stop you from giving God praise. Don't you let the devil stop you from exalting the Lord. Amen. In the middle of your problems, in the middle of your tribulation, God will show up and give you a glory. You got to glorify God in the middle. Tell somebody, say, don't wait till the battle's over. Go ahead and shout. Go ahead and shout. Go ahead and shout. Y'all ain't got it. Go ahead and shout right now. Come on, lift up your voice and shout. Now, that's it. You're going through, but you still got your shout. Be seated, be seated, be seated. That, that's what the devil will do. He'll try, to, he'll try to put so much pressure on you till you lose your shout. And then once you lose your shout, then sorrow comes in. Then your, then your problem become bigger than your God. But when you're in the kingdom, you keep your big God bigger than your little problems. That's why you got to keep your shout. Now, sit, 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 sit. I got to stop. I'm about to wrap it up. Now, what does glory mean? What does glory mean? Rejoice. What does glory also mean? Celebrate and boast. Brag. Amen. Exalt him. See, that's the glory right there when you're going through in the middle of the trial. That's what you got to do in the kingdom of God. Now, here's tribulation. Let's deal with tribulation. We don't like that word, but, but guess what? It, it's, a, it's a word you need. The word tribulation uh, comes from an old English word that is called tribulon. T-R-I-U-B-U-M. Tribulon. Okay? Y'all got it? Write it down. It's an old English word, and it comes from when farmers used to till the land. Back in the day, they didn't have tractors, so they would take oxen, and they would yoke two oxen up together. And then there would be the farmer uh, or the farmer uh, of the land, uh, the one that is sowing the seed, the one that is putting down or the one that is harvesting the wheat. And he would get behind the two oxen. And, 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 and in that day, he would have what is called a platform, a man, a truck, a tribum. Okay, amen. And, and what that was, was a flat platform that he would stand on while the oxen would pull. And so under that platform, there were rough edges. They would use sharp rocks. 
and stick on the underneath of that platform. And so when the farmer would get on that platform and say, giddy up, the oxen then will begin to plow. But on his platform, that platform will drag across the ground and it will crush all the wheat. It will crush all the wheat and then it will separate the husk from the wheat. Come on, y'all hearing what I'm saying? And so all of a sudden when they go back, the reapers, they would just reap the wheat and didn't have to pull off the husk. Are you seeing this? And so what tribulations does, where well, we get this word, tribulations comes to crush you. Come on, Bishop. It comes to separate things out of your life. Yes. Tribulation comes to put pressure. Come on, anybody ready for some pressure to hit your life? It puts pressure on you. Amen. And then it will cause things to be separated. See, when you're going through a trial and a tribulation, you can rejoice because God is separating. Y'all ain't going to shout amen. amen. He's trying to separate amen. impatience and give you some patience. He's separating some things in your life. He's getting some things out of your life so you can enjoy the best of your life. Anybody got it up in here? So the next time you go through a trial or a tribulation, you get that. Listen, that's why you can rejoice. Even though you're being crushed, even though you're being pressured, even though you're being stripped, even though you're being stretched, you can rejoice because when the stretching is over, when the crushing is over, when everything has stopped, God is going to reveal his glory to you. And that's why I shout when I'm going through. That's why I give him praise when I'm going through. Because I know that the crushing, the stretching, and the pressing is going to leave me with my best. Can somebody give God some praise in this place? Come on, tell somebody, say it's all a part of the process. It's a part of the process, amen? And God knows just when to crush you. He, he, Listen, he might crush you, but he won't break you. But as long as you're giving him glory, you know that the crushing is working out for your good. You know that the pressing is working out for your... Look at somebody and say, all the hell I done been through... I didn't understand it. I didn't know why I was going through. But God set it up to remove some stuff out of my life. Y'all ain't... Come on. While you was going through, some of your friends left you. Y'all ain't going... Come on. You were going through and you thought they were going to be there. But when you turned around, they were gone. But that's all right. It was a part of the separation process. Sometimes God got to get some wrong people out of your life. So he can set you up for... Tell somebody, say, he's setting me up for the right thing to hit my life. So when you get your millions, you ain't got to worry about who wants it. So I'm going to rejoice in the middle of my tribulation. I'm going to give God glory in the middle of my tribulation. I'm going to rejoice. Watch this. I'm going to rejoice in the process. I know it's hard, but, but I'm going to rejoice in the in the process because I know if I rejoice in the process I'm going to rejoice when I get the promise see everybody wants the promise with no process you can't get olive oil if you don't crush the tell somebody
Somebody say, if you want oil, it's got to be a crushing. If you want wine, you got to crush the grapes. So if you want God's best, sometimes you're going to have to go through a crushing process. But God's glory will be revealed once you come out of the crushing process. Look at me now. I don't look like what I've been through. Come on, touch somebody and say, you don't even look like what you've been through. Tell them, say, I know you've been through a lot, but you came out of it. You were tried in the fire, but you came out like pure gold. You was crushed, but you wasn't denied. You was crushed, but you wasn't broken. You was pressed, but the wine came out. You was pressed, but the oil is still flowing. Hey, somebody shout up in here. Come on, stand to your feet. Can you give him glory? Can you give him glory right now? It might not look right. It might not feel right. But rejoice. I say rejoice and be of good cheer. For you will overcome every demon. You will overcome every adversary. You will overcome all your enemies in the name of Jesus. Come on, shout if you receive that. Come on, give him praise. In the middle. Look at somebody say, it's right smack dab in the middle. I'm going to give him glory. Hallelujah. Point to somebody and say, are you going through? Say, if you are, go ahead and rejoice. Begin to brag on your God. Begin to brag on your God. In other words, if he did it before, he's going to do it again. If he brought you out before, he's going to bring you out this time. If he delivered you before, he's going to deliver you this time. Somebody shout. In the middle. In the middle. Hallelujah. Well, did you get something out of that? Did, did you get something? Now, now here's what I want you to get. That in the kingdom of God, you will, hear me clear, you will go through trials and tribulations. But, somebody shout but. But, the key is how you handle it in the middle. And that's why when you read the Bible, the Bible talks about the believers having peace. Peace I leave unto you. Peace I give unto you. Shalom. In the Middle East, when they greet one another, they greet one another by simply giving each other a kiss on each cheek. And they say, shalom, shalom. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. See, in the kingdom, you should have a peace. And that means you, it surpasses all understanding. What does that mean? All human understanding or human reasoning. Because we have peace in the kingdom. And we can rejoice and know that we will have victory over every trial and over every tribulation. And that we will identify with Christ's suffering. Because we are partakers of his suffering. And so you can rejoice in the middle. And that brings glory unto God. And when you give him glory, watch this. He releases his glory upon you. So lift up your hands and just thank him. Just thank him. Just begin to rejoice and thank him and give him praise. Thank him for bringing you out of that trial. Thank him for bringing you out of that tribulation. 
your faith will not waver. You will stand firm knowing that in the kingdom of God, the king will deliver you. He will take good care of you. And he is working on your patience. So be patient. I'm going to say it again. Be patient because the best, the best, the best is yet to come in your life. In Jesus' name, give him praise right there. Hallelujah. Glory to God. The best is yet to come in Jesus' name. Now, as we get ready to dismiss, and I'm going to try to do this pretty fast, we have a lot of prayer requests, and we do have some praise reports. So I need you to come in agreement with me. We have a prayer request for Billy Clark, who is going into surgery in the morning. And he has already says he thanks in advance for the prayers. He already got it. Amen. So, Brother Billy, we thank you that all will be well, that you're going to come out of surgery well, that you're going to have a speedy healing, and that the doctors are not going to make any mistakes, that all will be well. In Jesus' mighty name, we lift you up and send the word to you, Brother Billy. Also, we have a prayer request for Kenny Sterlis. He was shot and airlifted to a hospital in New Orleans. So we want to lift him up. Also, we want to lift up the Sterlis family. Uh, they also had a loss of a family member as well, uh, Stephen. Amen. Kenny was lifted. Stephen, I believe, didn't make it. Am I right? And, and many of you kind of know about that situation. But let's lift the Sterlis family up. Let's send them peace. Let's send them the love of God and the loss of their, their loved one and the one that is also fighting for his life. We thank you, Lord, that you're going to preserve him. Father, we pray, Lord, that you would visit them, that everyone in their household will be saved. In the name of Jesus, we lift up the parents. We lift up the loved ones. In the mighty name of Jesus, we thank you in advance that it is well. We also want to lift up Antoinette Woodworth. She needs prayer for her legs, and she is having surgery for circulation and pain. We send the word to you, Annette. Antoinette, we send the word to you right now according to the word of God. It says we can send the word and the word will heal them and deliver them from their destruction. We ask that you will just rest in him knowing that all will be well. We ask that you guide the hands of the, the physicians in the name of Jesus that they will have an excellent surgery and that the circulation and the pain will go away in Jesus mighty name. We also want to lift up, uh, this one says, Bishop, I want a, a praise report. I wanted to wait till things were final, but the wait is over. I am now a full-time employer, full-time worker, and I must give all the glory to God. Come on, give God some praise, a praise report. After eight months, I was offered a full-time position. Somebody shout patience. Eight months she waited and she finally got the full-time position. I celebrate with you in the name of Jesus. Also a prayer request for Levi, Levi Brown in the hospital that had hypertension and, and stroke-like symptoms. We want to lift you up, Brother Le uh, Levi. We pray right now, Father, in the name of Jesus, that his blood pressure becomes normal in the name of Jesus. Father, we rebuke any strokes right now. We rebuke any paralysis, Father God, on his left side. We declare that his brain will function properly and his motor coordination skills will function properly in the mighty name of Jesus. Come on, let's give God some praise right there. Hallelujah. We also have one that wants to come in agreement. Uh, the body of Christ comes in agreement uh, that their cousin Matthew Rito is healed in the name of Jesus. Every ventricle, every atrium, every vein, every artery, that it will line up 
with the word of God. We cancel every attack of the enemy against his body, against his mind, and against his family and declare divine health in the name of Jesus. Can somebody shout right there? Hallelujah. We also have a praise report. Praise report. Uh, our, a praise report our, uh, that was I think someone that was in ICU on a ventilator fighting pneumonia and bronchitis they're now off the ventilator and they're sitting up and they're strong come on give God some praise for that thank you Lord hallelujah and they're asking for prayer for his strength that he will get back to full health in Jesus mighty name we pray can somebody shout amen amen Amen. Glory to God. We also uh, have one that needs prayer for her son. And we're declaring that no weapon formed against him shall prosper. And we lift him up and his friend Kenya. Uh, and that they will have a good life. And they will be blessed in the name of Jesus. Amen. So let's shout right there. Amen. Give God some praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Also, we had another prayer request. Uh, individual that had to have oral surgery. Uh, they're dealing with some oral issues, uh, mouth issues, and they're believing that they will get everything taken care of. I think there are several teeth that need to be extracted, and they're believing for a speedy recovery. And there will be no poison, there will be no problems in the name of Jesus, and that they shall live and not die and declare the works of the Lord. Amen. We also have one other prayer request. Remaya RV, 16 years old, was in a bad car accident. And uh, she has a broken leg, stomach is bleeding, and had to have a major back surgery. We're praying for her to regain her strength. Dr. Kathy, you want to pray for Ramaya real quickly. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we lift up Ramaya to you, Lord God. Yes. Every area of her body, Lord God, we ask that you heal instantly. Yes. Lord, yes. in the name of Jesus, you are the healer. Yes. Father God, you're the Lord God that healeth us. And by your stripes, she is already healed in the name of Jesus. Father God, we thank you that her strength is coming back to her a thousandfold in Jesus' name. And Lord God, we thank Thank you that you make her whole not just heal yes. her but make her whole in jesus name we pray amen and thank god amen let Hallelujah. the church say amen. amen amen glory to god also before we depart we have sign up sheets on the foyer table for those of you that are looking to serve in the kingdom of god when we're transitioning yes, to the other lo across the street in the other location please sign up get involved everybody amen up. we want you involved because we're going to need all of your help and your assistance. Amen? Yes. Hallelujah. Well, Father, we thank you for the word today. We thank you for the word that it fell on good ground, which is the hearts of every believer. Now, Father, we bind up all accidents. We bind up all incidents. It is our prayer that every believer in this house, they shall live and not die and declare the works of the true and living God. Until we all meet again Wednesday night, let everybody in the house say, Amen. God bless you. We love you. Have a wonderful week. Listen, if you're giving your life to Jesus Christ, type in the comment section, I want to be saved. Or if you're rededicating, type in, I want to rededicate. And if you like to connect with us here at Living Word, type in, I would like to reconnect. God bless you. We love you. We'll see you Wednesday night. Stay connected to Pastor Joseph and Kathy Banks and Living Word Christian Center. For in-depth information or to place an order for any product, please visit our website at www.livingwordcc.org. For the latest breaking news, events, and information, visit us on Facebook or simply log on to our website. Follow the link. Thank you for viewing our service at Living Word Christian Center, 1639 Ryan Street, Lake Charles, Louisiana, 70601. We would like to invite you to join us for any of our services. On Sunday morning, be sure to join us for our main Sunday morning worship service beginning at 10 a.m. And be sure to join us on Wednesday evening at 7 p.m. We invite you to join us at Living Word Christian.
Christian Center.